Mrs. Caudle's Curtain Lectures by Douglas William Gerald. Read for LibriVox.org by Martin Clifton. Lecture 10 on Mr. Caudle's Shirt Buttons. There, Mr. Caudle, I hope you're in a little better temper than you were this morning. There, you needn't begin to whistle. People don't come to bed to whistle. But it's like you. I can't speak that you don't try to insult me. Once, I used to say, you were the best creature living. Now you get quite a fiend. Do let you rest? No, I won't let you rest. It's the only time I have to talk to you, and you shall hear me. I'm put upon all day long. It's very hard if I can't speak a word at night. Besides, it isn't often I open my mouth. Goodness knows. Because once in your lifetime your shirt wanted a button, you must also swear the roof off the house. You didn't swear? Ha, Mr. Caudle, you don't know what you do when you're in a passion. You were not in a passion, weren't you? Well then, I don't know what a passion is, and I think I ought by this time. I've lived long enough with you, Mr. Caudle, to know that. It's a pity you haven't something worse to complain of than a button off your shirt. If you'd some wives, you would, I know. I'm sure I'm never without a needle and thread in my hand. What with you and the children, I'm made a perfect slave of. And what's my thanks? Why, if once in your life a button's off your shirt, what do you cry, oh, at? I say once, Mr. Caudle, or twice, or three times at most. I'm sure, Caudle, no man's buttons in the world are better looked after than yours. I only wish I'd kept the shirts you had when you were first married. I should like to know where were your buttons then. Yes, it is worth talking of. But that's how you always try to put me down. You fly into a rage, and then if I only try to speak, you won't hear me. That's how you men always will have all the talk to yourselves. A poor woman isn't allowed to get a word in. A nice notion you have of a wife, to suppose she's nothing to think of but her husband's buttons. A pretty notion indeed you have of marriage. Ha! If poor women only knew what they had to go through. What with buttons and one thing and another, they'd never tie themselves up. No, not to the best man in the world, I'm sure. What would they do, Mr. Caudle? Why, do much better without you, I'm certain. And it's my belief, after all, that the button wasn't off the shirt. It's my belief that you pulled it off, that you might have something to talk about. Oh, you're aggravating enough when you like for anything. All I know is, it's very odd that the button should be off the shirt for I'm sure no woman's a greater slave to her husband's buttons than I am. I only say it's very odd. However, there's one comfort, it can't last long. I'm worn to death with your temper, and shan't trouble you a great while. Ah, you may laugh, and I dare say you would laugh, I've no doubt of it. That's your love, that's your feeling. I know that I'm sinking every day, though I say nothing about it. And when I'm gone, we shall see how your second wife will look after your buttons. You will find out the difference then. Yes, Caudle, you'll think of me then. For then, I hope, you'll never have a blessed button to your back. No, I'm not a vindictive woman, Mr. Caudle. Nobody ever called me that but you. What do you say? Nobody ever knew so much of me. That's nothing at all to do with it. Ha! I wouldn't have your aggravating temper, Caudle, for mines of gold. It's a good thing I'm not as worrying as you are, or a nice house there'd be between us. I only wish you'd had a wife that would have talked to you, then you'd have known the difference. But you impose upon me, because, like a poor fool, I say nothing. I should be ashamed of myself, Caudle. And a pretty example you set as a father, you'll make your boys as bad as yourself, talking as you did all breakfast time about your buttons, and of a Sunday morning too, and you call yourself a Christian. I should like to know what your boys will say of you when they grow up. And all about a paltry button off one of your wristbands. A decent man wouldn't have mentioned it. Why won't I hold my tongue? Because I won't hold my tongue. I am to have my peace of mind destroyed. I am not to be worried into my grave for a miserable shirt button, and I am to hold my tongue. Oh, but that's just like you men. But I know what I'll do for the future. Every button you have may drop off, and I won't so much as put a thread to em. And I should like to know what you'll do then. Oh, you must get somebody else to sew them, must you? That's a pretty threat for a husband to hold out to a wife. 
and to such a wife as i've been too such a negro slave to your buttons as i may say somebody else to sew em eh no caudle no not while i'm alive when i'm dead and with what i have to bear there's no knowing how soon that may be when i'm dead i say oh what a brute you must be to snore so you're not snoring ha that's what you always say but that's nothing to do with it you must get somebody else to sew em must you ha i shouldn't wonder oh no i should be surprised at nothing now nothing at all it's what people have always told me it would come to and now the buttons have opened my eyes but the whole world shall know of your cruelty mr caudle after the wife i've been to you somebody else indeed to sew your buttons i'm no longer to be mistress in my own house ha caudle i wouldn't have upon my conscience what you have for the world i wouldn't treat anybody as you treat no i'm not mad it's you mr caudle who are mad or bad and that's the worse i can't even so much as speak of a shirt button but that i'm threatened to be made nobody of in my own house caudle you've a heart like a hearthstone you have to threaten me and only because a button a button i was conscious of no more than this says caudle for here nature relieved me with a sweet deep sleep End of chapter.